Has your child suddenly come down with obsessive compulsive behaviors or tics? How about an eating disorder? Have they regressed in school or begun bedwetting? And you have no idea why it's happened and doctors can't pinpoint a cause? Well, then your child may be suffering from pandas. No, I'm not talking about the cute and cuddly bear. I'm talking about pediatric autoimmune neuropsychiatric disorder associated with streptococcal infection. That is what PANDAS stands for. And there's a similar disorder called PANS, which is pediatric acute onset neuropsychiatric syndrome. And the difference between the two is PANS could be caused by any infectious trigger, not just strep, or environmental triggers. So today I want to dive into PANDAS and PANS and what you can do to figure out if your child has that and what it means, what's the mechanism behind it, and how to go about getting on the path to recovery. I'm Dr. John Bartimus, and I'm putting the pieces together to help you live a life at Optimal. If you've had a normal child and uh, they abruptly developed obsessive compulsive behaviors or tics, and it was associated maybe with a recent infection, or maybe you haven't made that association, they may be suffering from pandas or pans. Pandas, again, is pediatric autoimmune neuropsychiatric disorder associated with streptococcal infection or strep, like strep throat. So strep throat has been found to be an associated trigger of driving the OCD, the tics, the, that obsessive compulsive behavior. And these symptoms are abrupt onset, and then once you have it, they can be relapsing and remitting. So on and off, recovery flares, recovery flares. Typically this is occurring in children before puberty, and so if you've had a child that's been normal all along and all of a sudden this hit or you've noticed this hit after they had a strep infection like strep throat, then you may be dealing with pandas. Pans is similar in that it's got abrupt onset of OCD symptoms and or sudden decrease in food consumption or a, a, an eating disorder as well as two of the following, anxiety, depression, irritability, a regression in school, sensory abnormalities or motor abnormalities, so perhaps a tick or, you know, itchiness or different sensory symptoms, and or insomnia or bedwetting. So if your child has developed OCD symptoms, changed their eating behaviors, they're more moody, they've regressed and started bedwetting or they've taken a step back in school, that could be due to PANS, Pediatric Acute Onset Neuropsychiatric Syndrome. And that again could be caused by infectious triggers other than strep. So common ones discovered have been Mycoplasma pneumoniae and flu has been associated with it as well as well as others. And environmental triggers as well, so non-infectious triggers. So these two issues, pandas and pans, are more and more common and conventional medicine, many doctors are unaware of them. So you may have presented to your doctor with your child with these symptoms and they don't really know where to look. Well, let's look at the mechanism. How does a strep infection drive this neuroinflammatory disorder? Let's dive into that. So let's say your child has a strep infection that strep infection, the, the streptococcus microbe is made up of certain proteins and proteins are made up of amino acids. So the amino acid chains that make up proteins is like a, a, an alphabet soup. Okay, so the body sees those amino acids or sees those proteins and reads the sentence. So say the strep sentence is the dog is white with black spots. Okay, that is strep's unique sequence. Well, your body also is made up of proteins, so different tissues in your body 
have different amino acid sequences? Well, pandas and pans is associated with neuropsychiatric issues, so what happens is the strep cross-reacts with brain tissue. So dopamine receptors are a common target. So let's say your dopamine receptor amino acid sequence, if we translated it, would read the dog is white with brown spots. So strep was the dog is white with black spots, and your dopamine receptors say your dopamine receptors sequence would say the dog is white with brown spots. Well, after infection with immune activation, especially if it's repeated, what can happen is the immune system starts to get exhausted or starts to um, lose the ability to differentiate between the strep and the dopamine receptors. It gets lazy in its reading. So if this was the dog is white with black spots and this is the dog is white with brown spots, the immune system may read the dog is white and be like, oh, I know what that is, that's strep, and attack it. But if it's reading the dog is white and just attacking from there and it's looking at a dopamine receptor, now your immune system is attacking your own brain and that can lead to symptomatology like the OCD or the tics. Okay, so we want the immune system to read the full sentence, not stop it, the dog is white, and attack thinking your brain is strep. Well, that's what's happening mechanistically in this neuroinflammatory neuroautoimmune disorder. The immune system is repeatedly activated by strep infections. It gets lazy or starts to lose differentiation and reads half a sentence and now attacks self. And now you've got the OCD and or tics and or eating disorders and or anxiety, depression, insomnia, regression, in school, uh, bedwetting, etc. that indicate pandas or pans. Studies show that it's not the first strep infection that causes it. So uh, they, the, the, the number that has been shown in the research is that by, by multiple strep infections, so say up to seven strep infections, this starts to happen. And another thing that can be confusing is your child may have strep but not have the signs and symptoms of strep. So they may not have a fever. They may not have erythema or redness on their tonsils or their throat. They may not have cervical lymph nodes that have swollen. So there may be no physical indicator that they have strep. And this is another reason why many doctors, when you bring their child in saying, out of nowhere he's been OCD all of a sudden, or he's got this tick all of a sudden, if he's not presenting with obvious strep symptoms, they likely aren't gonna swab and check for it and it can go undetected. And so there's one, okay? Then maybe he has, he's had a couple obvious strep infections in his life, there's a couple more, and then maybe sister gets an infection, brings it home, and it infects him, but he doesn't present symptoms, there's another one. So we're piling up strep infections, we're piling up multiple hits to the immune system, and there's potential that with each extra one, the immune system starts to lose differentiation, starts to read the dog is white and doesn't look for black spots or brown spots, it just sees dog is white and says, I know what that is, that's strep, I've seen it so many times recently, attack. And now we're attacking dopamine receptors or tubulin receptors or different brain targets like the basal ganglia and that results in obsessive compulsive disorders or tics, motor tics, vocal tics, phonic tics, different kinds of um, motor issues. So I just wanted to bring this up today because it is a growing issue. It is not well recognized. Uh, there are many doctors that aren't aware of it. I had a family recently that whose son has pandas that we found that they've seen multiple other doctors that weren't able to find it. When they went back to their pediatrician and showed them what we found, the pediatrician said, I've been in practice for 25 years and I've never seen this. What that means is, that doesn't mean that he's, it, 
that cases have not presented in his office in 25 years, it means that he's unaware of it, doesn't know how to see it or to look for it, so isn't going to find it. So what we need is parents to be more aware of it so they can advocate for their children. We need doctors to be more aware of it so that they can find it and these children can receive care sooner because the sooner that you find it and provide care for it, the better these children do in returning to a normal quality of life. The studies show that once it's there, it tends to be a relapsing remitting type presentation. So there's good days, there's bad days, there can be flares. So treatment or care involves addressing any acute infection for sure, promoting optimal immune function, and avoiding other triggers if you have PANS that are non-infectious, so other environmental triggers. And of course, lifestyle is going to matter too. So your blood sugar, your sleep patterns, all of the things that are going to impact immune function all matter because if we get stressed and the immune system gets suppressed, then we can have reactivation of these infections driving further damage of neural tissue or brain tissue. So it's primarily and fundamentally an immune system dysfunction that allows us to happen. So we need to support optimal immune function and then augment that with lifestyle. Sometimes it is necessary to use medications in these cases. There are various medications used. There are other therapies used like IVIG and others. So working with a clinician that understands this process and has the ability to provide these things if necessary is going to be very important for your child to reach a life at optimal.